a lot of you have told me that I need a bench to work on so that I don't have to work on the floor anymore. So here it is, the bench. I don't really see the advantage. So there are two things that I want to share with you to give you a little bit of context about this build. The first one is, the reason that I built this shelf is because someone that I share a bathroom with doesn't always know where to put his dirty clothes. So my idea was I'd build a shelf and there would be two small hampers, one for me and one for this unnamed person. Problem solved. The second thing is, I did my voiceover right after I got back from WorkbenchCon, so I have the voice of a frog. Enjoy! I helped Ben mill down some cedar 2x6s into 2 by 2 and a halfs, and I used his leftovers to build this project. I cut 5 pieces at 23 inches, which is just enough space to fit in between the bathtub and the cabinets in my bathroom. It wasn't so bad working on a workbench, but I gotta say, when you drop things, it's a lot harder to pick them back up again. I got tired of picking up the pieces of wood off the floor, so I moved the saw off the bench and then I dropped my pencil. I measured and marked the cut lines for where the shelf would intersect with the legs, but then I realized that I marked it in the wrong place, so I Remeasured and I remarked. And I got one line further before I realized that was also incorrect, so I flipped it around and started over. I clamped the piece down to my workbench, because I'm using a workbench this time, and I cut the notches with a jigsaw. This is what it looks like from a little bit farther back. If you're going to build this project at home, I recommend that you completely and absolutely intentionally back kick that piece into the void in the center of your workbench. I find it really helps a lot. I cut all the legs at 37 inches long, which is good because then they're all the same length, and I definitely always wore my safety glasses. I clamped all the pieces together so that when I cut the grooves that the shells would fit into, they would all be in alignment. I left 3 inches at the bottom for feet, and I used a shelf piece to measure the width and the depth of my saw blade. I made two slow, careful cuts along each of the outer lines, and then ran my saw through the center a few more times to make it easier to remove the waste. I used a hammer to break up all the smaller pieces, and as you can see, I was very careful and precise and didn't hit the legs at all. I repeated the process on the opposite side, but the only difference this time is that I knew that I wanted the shelf to sit flush with the legs, so I pushed those cuts all the way to the top. 3rd shelf, you know the drill by now. I used a chisel to break off some of the bigger pieces, and then I did a lot of sanding. I should have unclamped them to do the sanding because it would have been way easier, but you know what they say about hindsight? Makes an ass out of you and me. I did take advantage of them being clamped together to do a bit of sanding.
It was my first time doing a glue up like this, so I was kind of excited, but it turns out it's not really that exciting. At the last minute, I did remember to make sure that it was fairly in line. I finished the glue up just in time to have lunch with a friend. This is Gary. We were also joined by another friend. This is also Gary. And there, in the background, that's Gary. Gary's don't share. I don't know what y'all do while glue's drying, but I found this is an excellent way to pass the time. I had made sure that I wiped up all the excess glue that was on the top of the piece, but I went back with a chisel after it had dried to scrape off all the drips that formed on the underside. I used a variety of foot clamps for the sanding process. If you don't have foot clamps available to you, then you can use thigh clamps. They work kind of like a vacuum table and they're just as good. I was pleasantly surprised that some of the pieces went together pretty well, but there was still some sanding that had to be done. Turns out, that second time that I made those cut marks was also not very precise. And now the moment of truth, the dry fit. As I was putting it all together, I was thinking about all the ways that it could have gone better. Things like using hardwood, using a table saw so the cuts are more precise, and just if I had been a better woodworker in general. But you know what the truth is? It came together really well. The fits were so tight it didn't even need any nails or screws. I did decide to go back and reassemble it using glue because since the top shelf wasn't wedged in, it was a little bit loose and if I was going to glue the top, why not glue the whole thing? Hey Gary! There was a little bit of stick out in one of the top corners, so I used two clamps to hold it in place while it dried. I then gave it an all over sanding, not just to smooth it out, but to flush up all the bits that stuck out and hide all the mistakes I made. Well, some of the mistakes I made. I made sure to get rid of all the sawdust before I applied one coat of Verathane's Antique White Wood Stain. And in case you're wondering, that's Ben. That's my brother. He's not my husband. He is definitely my brother and definitely not my husband. Once the stain had time to set, I wiped it off with a clean cloth. I also applied a finish, but you can't really see it on camera, so moving on. I had some thick industrial felt left over from another one of Ben's projects, and I decided to make the hampers out of that. I cut out a large square that I would then cut in half to make the sides and the bottom of each of the hampers.
I then cut out a smaller square which I would divide into four pieces and they would be the ends of each hamper. I knew that I wanted the bottoms of the hampers to be rounded, so I grabbed the closest round thing, marked it, and cut off the corners. I centered the piece with the rounded corners and set up to sew it all together. This was my first time using a sewing awl, and so this was actually a 10 minute long clip condensed down to 10 seconds, and it's just me making the first stitch. But once I got the hang of it, it was actually pretty cool. It definitely beats hand sewing saddle stitches on felt. Once I got to the end, I just backstitched, pulled the threads to the inside, and tied a couple of knots. And the rest of it is just the same as what you saw, so moving on to the final project. Considering my lack of experience, I think that this project turned out pretty good. It's true that none of the joints fit as well as they should, but whatever. I'm pretty happy with it. But those seams though, I must have been cross-eyed when I made those. If you want to see what I'm doing on a daily basis, which is basically hanging out with Gary, follow me on Instagram. I'm enjoying how it looks now because I know it will end up looking like this. Did you use my towel? Yeah. I didn't realize there weren't any towels. Let me, uh, let me give you a replacement towel.